Today we're making custom Lego, bolts and fishing lures all using a homemade plastic injection machine and 3D printed molds. As a quick recap, in our last video we used resin 3D printers to make plastic injection molds that we used to make custom parts at home very easily using Injecto 2.0, this incredible desktop plastic injection machine. In this video, we want to print various types of molds that will test the limitations, accuracy and injection volume of Injecto 2.0. By the way, we're giving away one free Injecto 2.0 kit to our random subscribers so be sure to hit that subscribe button right now. The winner will be announced in our community page and in this video's description. So let's get started. We've always wanted to make our own Lego so we designed these custom molds that have our logo on them. We printed the two parts of the mold on our Elegu Saturn S printer using cheap resin which took only 2 hours. The molds turned out great and they cost us $5.94 to make which is super cheap for homemade injection molds. The logo also turned out incredibly well so we're excited to see whether this logo will be visible on the Lego parts themselves. We also used a lathe to turn these 3 8 by 16 screws into custom ejector pins. These ejection pins thread right into the back of the mold and are screwed out to remove the part. They also act as core pins which form the round shape at the bottom of the Lego piece during injection. So finally, let's go make some Lego. First, we put ABS plastic pellets into Injecto and give them a minute to plasticize. Now that they're hot, we take the two halves of the mold, close them and put them in our vise. We then elevate the scissor lift, place the mold in the nozzle and press our two injection buttons. Woohoo! That seemed to work great for a first try. We left these two notches in the mold design so we can pry this open with a screwdriver and voila! we have a perfect and custom Lego piece. To give you guys a better visual of how the parts get injected inside the mold, we went on Amazon and got some clear resins for our frozen Sonic Mighty 8K and the results were phenomenal. Look how clearly you can see our custom logo on these molds, that's awesome. We also made a clear mold for our bolt but we'll get to that later on. For now, it looks like our two Lego halves fit very precisely which gives us the green light to start injecting. We inserted the three ejector pins like we did in the previous Lego molds, closed them, clamped them together and injected. Here it is again in slow motion to give you a visual of how the plastic flows inside the mold. We found this visual to be somewhat useful. Opening up the mold revealed a beautiful Lego piece. Now taking a closer look, we can see that there are definitely some sink marks here but we don't think that's going to affect the functionality of these Lego pieces. Next, we use our handy ejector pins to remove the piece, cut the excess plastic and ta-da! We have just manufactured custom Action Box branded Lego pieces. Pretty cool, right? Two Lego pieces are kinda useless though, so we made a bunch more and built a mini pyramid for proof of concept. The Lego pieces snap together really nicely and are held tightly just like real Lego. Thanks to Injecto, now everyone can make Lego at home. We also 3D printed some Lego and got these incredibly high quality pieces which we were able to use with our plastic injected pieces showing just how precise these injections are. By the way, if you're interested in buying Injecto 2.0 feel free to check out our website at actionbox.ca. At this point we thought it would be cool to create some nuts and bolts for the shop. So we uploaded a screw and nut design from the internet to our CAD software and quickly made these molds in about 10 minutes. Now many of our viewers ask, which CAD software is this and where can I get it? Well this is Autodesk Fusion 360 and we get it directly from NextGen Cam. They were ranked as Autodesk's number one service provider in 2022 and their awesome staff are certified in all aspects of Fusion 360. As you can see here, we not only utilize Fusion 360 for design but also its plastic injection mold simulations which came in super handy when we were trying to reduce sink marks, air entrapments, shrinkage and warp edge with our Lego molds. Whether you're making molds for Injecto 2.0 or just trying to turn your ideas into reality, give these guys a call. We printed the bolt molds on our Creality Hallet 1 Plus and had these beautiful pieces after an hour. Check out these amazingly tight seam lines. It's quite impressive for 3D printed parts. This piece here is our actual mold which as you can see has escape channels for any excess plastic. We also made this version without an escape channel to stress test the molds. We assume that without these escape channels the pressure that Injecto can produce will cause these small plastic molds to crack or even explode. So first, let's test the proper mold with escape channels. We begin by clamping it onto the vise. Before injecting, we make sure to wear proper fume masks and face shields as a safety precaution and now we're ready. 
We've sped up the video here, but it normally takes around 5 seconds to inject a mold this size. The result was very exciting. We can now make a bunch of plastic bolts for use in our home shop. For some of our attempts, we had plastic leaking from the sides of the molds as we injected, so we decided to investigate and found the issue. If we take the two molds and close them, you can see that we have a really tight seam. But take a look what happens when we put it in the vise and tighten it. You see how that opens up? So what we need to do is put a clamp right over here like that. However, after a few tests, we found that simply using the clamp directly on the center of the mold produced high quality results and drastically simplified our process without the need for a vise. That being said, we still believe there is a benefit to using a vise due to the higher clamping force. So we designed a new mold that has the injection site on the side, allowing it to fully fit inside the vise, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's test it out and see the outcome. So nothing new with the process here, we just inject the mold and open it up, and the new design seemed to have worked really well. Now it's time to test the accuracy by trying to screw a nut into this bolt. So we took it out with a flathead, screwed in the nut, and without further processing it screwed in perfectly, proving just how accurate these 3D printed molds can be. Now earlier in the video we mentioned that we'll show you an injection of this clear mold, so here's a quick look at how that turned out. This is a super cool visual, and the bolt came out flawless and functional. In terms of pricing, each of these molds costs only $2 to make, but obviously don't last very long, so you can also use more durable metal molds. For our last test, we wanted to see if we can make several parts in one go. So we used our frozen 8K printer to make these custom molds for our very detailed fishing lures. To make these mold halves, we used our frozen 8K resin, which I must say is probably my favorite printing resin so far. It's a little more expensive at $50 per bottle relative to the cheaper Amazon alternatives, but the results can't be beat. I also found it to warp less. By the way, you may have noticed these new racks that we're using to house our 3D printers. We needed an upgrade and wanted something that spans the entire length of the wall, so we ordered these industrial racks online from Renegade Racking. We'll leave their website in the description if anyone is interested. Alright, back to the fish molds. In our design process, we added these little channels where we drop our hooks, which should give us a nice overmold for a professional looking product. Now, we admit we don't know much about fishing, so leave us a comment if you know how to properly make one of these lures. We repeated the quick injection process, and opening up the mold revealed this amazing product. We're doubtful that we'll catch any fish with it, but we'll still give it a try. We quickly trim off any excess plastic, and there you have it, a homemade fishing lure. Lastly, to test our mold size limit, we printed these molds which are used to make the hoppers for Injecto 2.0. When we opened the molds, the injection was consistently too short. The part was also stuck very well onto the mold, so it cracked instead of popping off when we tried to remove it. We probably needed an ejector pin on each side, just like the LEGO molds. But regardless, it doesn't seem like we can inject objects as thin and large as these plastic pellet hoppers. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next time.